Hello everybody and welcome to my Pandemonium 2 Savage Guide. The fight starts off with Murky Depths, a standard little medium hitting red red AoE that the boss will cast numerous times throughout the fight. Double Impact is a two person tank buster for both tanks to stand in, or you can use your invulnerability for it. Similar to the normal raid, he will cast Sewage, another raid wide filling the arena with poisoned water not to be stepped in, leaving only the elevated platforms and the drainways passable. Stepping into toxic water will poison you and make you take insane damage over time. One drain will always be clocked in the Savage version and it's best to stand on the platform diagonally from it as this makes getting into safe spots on certain mechanics very easy. Now he will cast a variation of Cataract. Similar to the normal raid, the body will do a line AoE. Unlike the normal raid though, the head will only cleave in front if it casts Spoken Cataract. If he casts Winked Cataract, it's actually a debate and the cleave goes behind the head, leaving the safe spot in front of him. These cataract variations will be cast throughout the entirety of the fight, so keep a close eye on which of the two was cast, to avoid unnecessary damage income. Next up, Coherence. Coherence will tether a random person. This tether has to be grabbed by a tank and brought to the other end of the room, as the damage it does is distance based. Shortly after, the boss will do a wild charge on the rest of the group, so have the tank in front, as it's damaging the first person more than the others. If not mitigated and shielded correctly, this can end up dealing massive amounts of damage to the raid, so be prepared. He will cast Murky Depths again, dealing raid-wide damage. I will only briefly mention them from now on, because there's nothing more to them. Ominous Bubbling is a delayed, light party stack on both healers. First, he shockwaves though, where the boss turns to one corner, indicating where he's jumping, and he will be knocking back at the same time, now the healers will get the light party soaks on them. We decided to use anti-knockback and have one group move through the boss and one stay close to have the most amount of uptime for everybody. Next up, Predatory Everest. This marks one healer with a raid soak indicated by this little tier and a random tank in DPS with this debuff, knocking anyone back who stands close to them. At the same time he will cast a cataract, either spoken or winged, leaving the same specified safe spots from before. Now we have the party stay on that platform and after the cataract finishes there's plenty of time for debuff players to move away from the rest of the party. After that this phase concludes and the water gets removed for a little while allowing you to move freely again. Now he will cast channel link flow giving all 8 players an arrow with the direction showing where you will get knocked to. You have to get knocked against another player to stop you from getting yeeted off the map. We made a plus like shape getting a huge high five in the middle of the platform with the entire party. There has to be a certain distance between the players though and the minimum distance should be somewhere behind the drains. If there is too little distance between the two of you, you will high five yourselves to death. Another double impact for the tanks. And murky depth and sewage for the raid, filling the stage up with water again. After the stage is full of water, he will cast a shockwave in a random corner, which you can anti knockback. After that, he will cast the probably hardest mechanic in this fight. It is called Campeo's Hama, and to understand it correctly, I will break it down for you again. Hippocampus will mark 4 players with blue numbers 1 to 4, and 4 players with purple numbers 1 to 4. Everything shown from now on will happen at the same time, but to better visualize it, I will do them one after the other. The players with the blue diamonds 1 and 3 go to the furthest platform where the boss knocked back from. Blue numbers 2 and 4 will stand behind the boss, making him bounce in between 1 and 2, leaving a little bit of space to swap places from 1 and 3, then he will bounce back, 2 and 4 can swap, and he dashes back to number 4. So nobody gets hit twice. The 4 purple mark players will go to the corresponding marker we placed between the platforms and going a little bit more away from the platforms the blue numbers are currently standing on. This way they can bait the head to jump over and over again. The mechanic is pretty unforgiving and will cause a lot of wipes at first, but once you get a hang of it, it will become second nature to you. The floor markers between the two platforms are not set in a particular way, we just put 1, 2, 3, 4 down. After that mechanic, the body will reunite with its head, and you guessed right, double impact into murky depths. After that, he will cast channeling overflow, the mechanic with the arrows from earlier, but this time in the water setting. The debuffs will either be on 15 or 25 seconds, which I will refer to as long arrows or short arrows. The short arrows have to bump into each other first, while the long debuff players get an AoE around them tucking into a corner or close to the clock drain with that. To have minimum distance between each other, make sure to always crash into each other from behind the drains, quickly heal up as now long debuffs go off and the short debuff players get the AoE over their head, having to go to the safe spots. There will be not much time in between to relax, because another cataract is following shortly, so make out the safe spot and run into it. 
If you're getting bored, you can jump into the water and require massive amounts of healing, like I did right there, because, yeah, you know, I was definitely not stupid right there. After that, the room will slowly clear up again and the boss will cast Predatory Everest. The double knockback debuff and stack marker debuff thing he did earlier. There is a little bit time before they go off though, as first he will dislocate his head from his body and place his head in a random corner of the room, indicating which side the head will cleave. Now he will cast a random cataract again that will go off at the same time as the debuffs you got earlier. So to break that down, look at the head on the side. Which side is it cleaving? Which side is the normal head cleaving? And which side is the body cleaving? There will be a safe platform for the party to stack in and we just shoved our DPS in the corner and the tanks behind us and let everything go off at the same time. As you probably can see now in the background, the spacing on that is really really tight, so be really careful where you stand. Then just enjoy the water spectacle. <laughs> After that he will dislocate his head again, placing his head in a random corner, and cast Sewage Eruption, having the party bait AoEs under them. So we bait the first puddles in the lane that we know is gonna get cleaved from the head, and then slowly move out step by step. Make sure not to use sprint as that can screw up other players. After that we immediately have to spread, but since we have the whole stage available we just yolo it, melees in, ranged out. Without any further delay he will cast coherence again, making a tank, grab the tether and the rest of the party stacking on the opposite side of the tether for the wild charge. Make sure to heal everybody up after the spread as this stack here does a lot of damage again. If you survive this he will cast one last sewage, filling the room up with water one last time. Go to the comfortable platform across the room from the one that is clocked and prepare for him casting Channeling Overflow again. This time there will be no AoEs but he will cast Coherence at the same time, forcing the tank with a long timer arrow to take the tether away from the group towards the clock platform. The rest of the long arrows stack on the comfortable platform across the clocked one out of everyone else's way. After the first set of high fives, run back to the original platform as the flare and the wild charge are going off right now, so healers make sure to top everyone off before that. Then, the long arrows will go off shortly after, so get ready to high five your partner. The people with the short debuffs have nothing to do right now, so just stand out of the other people's way. Now, he will dislocate his head again, and bait AoEs will appear under us again. So we search for the head and stay on the lane where his head is, and do the same thing as before, just with a little bit less space this time. We bait the first AoE, slowly step out of it, next AoE, slowly step out of it, next AoE and go into the safe zone. During that he will cast the light party soaks onto the healers again and he will jump to another corner knockbacking from it. You can just anti knockback and stay where you are but if you want full uptime you actually need to run to him. If not everyone is alive this can become a problem but we managed to get pretty lucky with all mitigation plus tangle before the stacks, having only 2 dps die and being able to recover from that. For his final act he will double impact again and you guessed it, he will murky deaths multiple times before going into final sewage enrage. Thank you for watching, keep in mind that this is all day 1 progression strats and it got a little bit messy in the end but I hope I could help you get a grasp of the fight in general and or break down some mechanics for you easily. Thank you for all the love and support in the last couple of videos and subscribe if you don't want to miss the upcoming guides. Thank you for watching and have fun raiding.